Hi, I'm Chelsea, and today I'm going to show you how to use your clone and heal tools and content aware fill to remove distracting elements from the background of your picture. So first I'm going to take you into Lightroom and show you how to use the clone and heal tool. And then I'm going to take you into Photoshop and show you why Photoshop has a leg up with those tools. So let's get started in Lightroom. This picture is a bit underwhelming, but for model release issues and and other practical teaching reasons, I chose a picture that's, okay, it's not the best, but it illustrates the point really well. So first, let's select your heel tool and use this to remove this cone and this yellow shirt here. So you can just select it. Pretty good. And then you can adjust your feathering as you see fit. And your opacity, which should be up to 100%. And you want to make sure that it's matching the texture. And it will, the heel tool will match the tone and texture and the light a bit. But you can even drag it to a similar spot. If you can see that there's a green line and then a yellow line, you want to make sure that you're still matching um, just the lines, the natural lines of the photo and the natural texture so that there's not some just out of place blob. That's a common problem that I see. So you can see here, if we back it off, you can't even tell that anything was removed from the picture. Now things get a little bit more difficult when a distraction in the background is intersecting with your subject, like this blue shirt here against Madeline's leg. So here you'll need the clone tool and the heel tool. The clone tool is good for just getting an exact stamp from another area of the picture. I'll show you what I mean. Let's zoom in. And I have the feathering all the way down. I'm going to make my brush very small because I want to get right up against her leg, up against her shorts. And then I'm going to move the clone tool to the edge here. When you look at it, you'll see it. the clone tool creates a lot of hard edges and that's because it's exactly taking the part of the picture that you select. So you can do some feathering, but another way to help with those hard edges is to take your heel tool. So select another heel brush. and go over the edges to soften them. Now we'll select the edges of this cloned part and the rest of this shirt. This is one of the problems that I have with Lightroom is that, like, why? Like, why are you doing this to me right now? Why do you think that this jump rope would be in the middle there? I, that's frustrating to me. But you can just drag it back up and just pick somewhere reasonable. And you can see that the heel tool, again, smoothed out the edges. Let me deselect here and made it a bit more natural. But there's still blue left over and it's a bit sloppy. I mean, zoomed out, you don't really notice so much. But it's good to go back and clean that up a bit. Move the feathering down again. Oh, I have my heel tool selected and you can see what happens. It makes all of these strange artifacts. So let's go to clone and then drag this to an appropriate place. And that's a bit cleaner. And now we can select heel and tidy up those edges again. Hold on a second, I have to control Z because I accidentally moved something. So you can see that that's pretty clean. I had to go over just one spot quite a few times 
and those layers of the clone tool start to interact with each other. I was kind of accidentally dragging them. And I might want to remove this car, and after having that experience, I know that it's going to take many passes to get that done. So let me take this picture into Photoshop and show you what it's like to edit the same picture in Photoshop. So first you can select your lasso tool up here, and I'll press Control plus to zoom in, and you can just select this element in the background that, that doesn't look very good. And I press Backspace, and make sure that it's Fill, Content, Aware, Fill. And press Control D to deselect, and you can see that it did a pretty good job the first time. Same thing here, Backspace, Content, Aware, Fill, and even here it should do a pretty good job. The Content Aware Fill tool often, oops, Control D, often does mess up, but I feel like it works really well most of the time. So you can see it even included her shorts. It knew where the shorts started and the grass ended. And if you have any strange artifacts here, you can go back and you can just use Content Aware Fill again. Content Aware Fill. That spot's a little messy. And that's much easier. And if you wanted to remove the car, you could just circle the whole car. If you feel that you get too much, I did that intentionally, believe it or not, press Alt, and that will then allow you to select and remove pieces of your selection. Now let's see what happens. That's pretty good. I'm going to duplicate this layer, and because when I start making a lot of edits, I like to always duplicate the layer so that I have the original layer underneath to work with. I don't want to do any destructive editing. And then I'll select this clone tool here, and you can see that the tree line, it looks like there's a big hill. It doesn't look that unnatural, but I just think it should be brought down. So I'll press Alt and select the bottom of this tree, and just bring it down to about where the rest of the trees are. There you go. And there's some little lines that you can take out. You kind of have to go back and touch things up as you go. That looks bad. You can play with the opacity a little bit and move it down if you don't want the hard lines. If you want to just kind of get a natural dappled look. And that's pretty much it. You definitely can get it done in Lightroom. But for me, it takes more time. I find the tools to be a bit more clumsy. And I like that Photoshop has the layers, and I think that the content aware fill is amazing, so I like to use that. Um, just some general tips. If you're, if you're trying to clone out something on, let's say, a brick wall, follow the natural patterns. Make sure all the lines match up. Don't be sloppy. Take the time to match everything up and make sure that the perspective is right. You might also have a situation where, let's say, there were a bunch of cars here, and you only had a tiny bit of green to clone from, that can be really difficult. There are instances when you'll get better at editing and you'll look at a picture and you'll say, that's just not even worth it. I should just be more mindful when I'm shooting and try to get a cleaner background. Um, you definitely can clone it in, but it'll end up looking repeated and cloned. So you wanna make sure that you don't clone patterns back into your picture that looks very unnatural. So I hope that was helpful. If you'd like to learn more, we have a Lightroom book. It's called Lightroom 6 slash DC. It has 12 hours of video and it comes with over 200 presets, which is kind of crazy. We also have a general photography book called Stunning Digital Photography, and that comes with 100 videos. That's really cool. It's also got a five-star rating on Amazon and over a thousand reviews. People seem to like it, and I think you will too. It also helps us out. So thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe and there will be more where this came from. Thanks, bye.